Thank you very much. First, let me uh, thank the gentleman from New York, Congressman uh, Jeffries, for this very important moment and theme tonight, where do we go from here, but also for your leadership in conducting these special orders uh, to make sure that the American people really know the truth about what's taking, here, what, taking place here in Washington, D.C., but also to hear the voice of conscience from the Congressional Black Caucus. We just heard from our great warrior, Congressman John Lewis. Also, I want to thank Congressman Horsford for being part of this for the last couple of years in terms of his tremendous leadership. You know, the other night I had an event with young people in my district. Uh, it's a lecture series sponsored by the uh, Martin Luther King Freedom Center. Our young people, Congressman Lewis knows these young people. They travel with me every year to Selma, Montgomery, Birmingham. These young people, we started the center in the 90s, and these young people's mission in life is to, to make sure that the new generation of leaders understand, one, that violence is not an option. Secondly, understand that we all are in this together, and we should be united as a country and fight for the American dream for all. The topic of last uh, Two nights ago, the, the lecture series was, where do we go from here, as I said earlier. And we had white students in the audience. We had African-American, Latino, and Asian Pacific American young people, middle-aged people, no people. It was held in my uh, alma mater at Mills College. And it was really amazing. We had uh, the co-founder of the United Farm Workers, Dolores Huerta, former state senator Art Torres. And we talked about where do we go from here uh, as a community in Oakland, and also throughout the country. And what we need to do here is really uh, get back to work for the American people. And that's what we heard over and over and over at our lecture series. You know, unfortunately, ever since the um, Republicans took control of the House of Representatives, uh, we see the governing through extortion and brinkmanship, including a government um, shutdown that cost the taxpayers $24 billion. I hope that's not where we go from here. Now uh, we're looking at even, or at least some are saying that they're shut down and are refusing to act on immigration while planning another series of votes to repeal the Affordable Care Act. They've even gone so far as to threaten impeachment because our president has continued to lead where they failed. Where do we go from here, uh, Congressman Jeffers? Let's hope not there. I hope we go where my young people in my community talked about the other night. And the threats about a government shutdown over immigration reform is outrageous. My district is a very diverse and dynamic district. That's what makes it really a great place for my constituents to live, work, do business, and raise a family. Yet we have many, many pockets of poverty. It's home to a vibrant immigrant community, families from all over the world. Many of them, and they told me again the other night, they're feeling uh, the pain each and every day of our broken immigration system. It's been more than 500 days since the Senate passed bipartisan comprehensive immigration reform. We need to have an up, and up or down vote. Uh, families deserve that. Time is really running out. We have three weeks of session left, so we need to get something done. That's where we need to go from here. If Congress fails to act on immigration reform, our president can and he should take action to keep families from being torn apart. Just like every president since Dwight D. Eisenhower, our president should act. But as the president has said, immigration reform should come from Congress. It should come from us. And that's what my community said in terms of moving forward. Let's get it done in the next couple of weeks. We have a bipartisan bill. Let's come together and have a vote. Our colleagues across the aisle need to put our economy ahead of pardon, pardonship. Excuse me. That means stopping their repeated attempts of eliminating access to affordable quality health care for millions of Americans. This past weekend marked the beginning of the second year of open enrollment under the Affordable Care Act. Repealing the Affordable Care Act and its protections for families would hurt all of our constituents. It would make health care less affordable and less access accessible. Yet every time Republicans vote to dismantle the Affordable Care Act, they make it perfectly clear that charging women for being a woman is okay, charging more, that denying victims of domestic violence coverage, that's okay, 
and allowing insurance companies to increase premiums to increase profits. And that's okay. Now, that's not what the American people need. Uh, where do we go from here? Let's not uh, go there. Millions have been covered, and let's move forward to make sure our country has universal, accessible, affordable health care for all. It is a basic human right. So we need to get back to doing the work of the American people, the work of forming a more perfect union. Finally, I just want to point out an article. It was a recent editorial in the New York Times from Nicholas Kristof, in which he discusses the historical and structural issues that continue to perpetuate racial disparities between blacks and white today. Mr. Speaker, I ask for unanimous consent to insert this article into the record, please. Without objection. Thank you. Kristof states that black Black-white economic inequality is greater in America today than it was in apartheid South Africa at ongoing discrimination against African Americans in the labor market and at systematic bias in law enforcement. So young people of color, especially young men, have been left behind the economic recovery. It's leaving them behind and far too often they are marginalized and forgotten. The poverty rate for African Americans is 27.2 percent, more than two and a half times the rate of poverty of white Americans. Nobody in our country should have to live below the poverty line. We're the wealthiest and most powerful country in the world. African American unemployment rate is 10.9 percent, nearly twice the national average. Young men of color are stopped and frisked at will. They are more incarcerated than any other group. The jobs that are available don't pay enough to get by while our safety net and nutrition programs continue to be hacked and slashed by House Republicans. And beyond the lack of opportunity, police misconduct and the criminal justice system are constant reminders of the tragic inequality which is still persistent in the daily life of black America. Where do we go from here? Let's move forward so that the that, that we remember that the deaths of Michael Brown and Trayvon Martin and Eric Garner and Oscar Grant, one of my constituents, their deaths, we've got to remember, are tragic examples of the senseless murder of young black men. As the mother of two black men and two black grandsons, I have to have many uncomfortable conversations with them, how to walk, how to talk, how to interact with the police. This is not just my reality, but the reality of millions of other black mothers and grandmothers and fathers and grandfathers. This is something no parent should have to do. No one should be afraid of the police who are sworn to protect and serve them. And these are issues that members of Congress must take leadership in addressing. This is where we must go from here. Finally, let me just say the work of building a more perfect union um, is just not uh, rhetorical. As members of Congress, we really do have a unique opportunity to do just that. To quote our drum major for justice, who Congressman Lewis had the privilege and honor to work with, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., he said, a genuine leader is not a searcher for consensus, but a molder of consensus. We have the privilege tonight to remind this body that we are the molder of consensus. Thank you again, Congressman Jeffers, for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. Thank you, Congressman.